So let's see what we do today. Good morning, people of YouTube. Thought I'd share with you guys what the store is looking like here at the moment. We've got some clothes out here, anything from Mario to women's clothing, jeans, all the good stuff here. We got some men's clothing, t-shirts, jerseys, more kids' clothing. Um, no soliciting in the door. Hey, guess what? We have auctions every Friday on our channel. So let's go and do a little tour of what we got here. Probably looks a little different since last time we were in here. Um, we got some stuff on consignment, which is really cool right here. We've got some Roland speakers, some Fender guitars. Check out this cool mirror. That's awesome. So we're always rearranging items in the store here. Here is a section with Thanksgiving come around the corner here. Nice little edition Kim put together. Check out this cool painting. Cowboy stuff. That's a consignment deal as well. So there's some consignment deals in here. There's all types of stuff that's... Uh, that's ours, and then um, stuff we've bought in from people coming in the store here. Stuff from garage sales, stuff from storage units. This here is kind of like our new with clothing rack. All these are new with tags. Here we've got, we've added a whole section here. Let's back up for a minute. Got more DVDs. These sell like really well. Uh, we've got some M&Ms. M&Ms, M&Ms. We've added this here. It's all brand new with tags, women's jeans and pants. So a lot of little knickknacks in here. Got another shelf of media, some CDs, DVDs. And here's our shoe section. Lots of nice brand new shoes. Got brand new Clarks here, 23 bucks. Are you kidding me? Where'd you get this stuff? It's got some Nikes. Check out these Vans. These are nice, brand new. And then we have all this stuff here that is nail polish. We've got, I mean, stuff that's brand new that you find in storage units. Um, here's our home decor stuff. We got some nice pieces down here. Brand new buffet servers. Some panini presses, waffle makers. Come back this way. Still got some of the nude dolls there, or the nude statues actually. Um, those sell pretty well. We've sold four or five of those. Here we got USB turntables. We got a, a brand new printer here, DVD players, and this is kind of like all of our, our brand new stock. Crock pots. Here we go here. We've got CDs, some electronics. We just added this section here, this doll section here, which is some cool dolls. We got a lot of porcelain dolls. A lot of collectible plates. Still got the good old diapers. Here's our jewelry again. Um, it's always constantly adding new pieces to the displays. And then uh, we're putting pieces out here, little gift boxes. I got all types of fun stuff in here. Along with all this, goodies. All right, this is kind of one of my favorite little spots here. We've got all different types of gemstones, some sterling jewelry, some watches, fashion rings, Pokemon cards, sealed Pokemon, all the right there for the kids, and just kind of some, some cool stuff there. We've got some books here. It's a little bookshelf. And we've got a lot of books here. Books sell very well. Um, we always run sales, buy one, get one free. But they do move, that's the cool part, or else they wouldn't be here. So a lot of this is like trial and error stuff. Starting to add some Christmas gear in here. So like the home decor section. Arts and crafts, look at all this fun stuff in here. For a little store, guys, it's, it's a lot of items in here. So. It's got some new tag kids clothing here. So we've maximized every spot in this store, except for a couple, which I'll point out here in a few. Um, belts. Hello, King. <coughs> First, when you walk in, you're greeted with crafts here in this M&M container. And then this is just kind of like, like a catch-all, but it's merchandising, right? Mom, I want a beanie baby. Oh, wow, you got oil filters. How much is the hat? A dollar. 
right? Purses here, Kim's setup here, this is always changing. People are buying it. She sets up these outfits with a pair of earrings. People buy it up. Um, we got vacuums. We still have a lot of these die cast cars. We sold a couple of them, but we've added some more items here. Salt and pepper shakers for days, and I've got a lot more of those. Again, just that merchandising standpoint of nice and clean and organized. Nothing's cracked, nothing's broken. Here's where the kids come in, and they just, Mom, I want this, I want that. Right? So, all different types of fun stuff here. Got some Star Wars up at the top. Here's the bedding section here. Just some nice little pillows, glassware, dishes. Still got a um, cabbage patch here. We got the horses. But this is um, a new addition, I think, that you guys haven't seen to our store. Or maybe you have. I'm not 100% sure. <coughs> Excuse me. So, merchandising. Um, getting these little bags, putting little Hot Wheels in there, a buck. Right? Rather than just sit in the bucket, we got a little piece of jewelry in here just for a dollar. We've got auxiliary cords, RCA cords, two bucks. Rather than just sit in the bucket, right? Um, nice and clean and organized. Bandana, three dollars. Fishing gear. We have brand new Play Doh stuff. So, that's cool. And uh, a lot of people come in here and shop, you know, looking for little rocks or. Mickey Mouse pins for two dollars. It's a it's a great way to organize using these peg hooks in these kind of sealable bags. Moving on to here, this is kind of like the sports section here. All these sports goodies, bobbleheads, sports cards. You can get a whole box for five dollars. Get out of here. Get out of town. <laughs> All right. Um, constantly adding items over here along with in this cabinet here this is some stuff we showcase for upcoming auctions lots of sealed sports cards lots of video games this whole cabinet is video games minus the typewriter down there just got these dolls in we'll be listing up and so we've got ds games ps3 ps4 nes we got we got a lot of it there and we will have a, we have a lot more coming in um here we got our graded cards got some graded cards some little action jackson here is kind of a little comic section. We don't want to overwhelm the store with one particular item, right? That's the, that's the key, what we're doing here, being in a 600 square foot facility. Um, we got some artwork on the walls. Here's a new addition right here. It's a cool little spot here. Picked up this cabinet, really neat here. It's got um, some little cactuses engraved into this, some cowboy boots, a cowboy hat, Got a Magic Johnson autograph there, Pete Rose. Here I'll just kind of throw out some, some jerseys, some jackets. 1980s, cool Arizona high school jacket. <coughs> Still have the boxing shorts. And then again, we're just we're filtering things on the wall here. Um, I still can't believe this Beatles thing is still here. Unbelievable. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Add the TV here with a little DVD player. I'll play some CDs and some musical people are in here, but also I can use that to test video games, stuff like that, DVD players, VHS players. This cabinet here is all some glassware. Storage here. Here, I'm actually going to move this. Just got this table in here. This Charles Russell. So that's that's kind of where the store is at at the moment, right? Lots of lots of goodies and lots of stuff in here for sure. All right, so here's a tip that um, I've been doing for years, even when I sell on the side of the road, is when you have kids' toys like this, you know, I mean, some people will just throw them out there and they'll just as is, right? I replace them with batteries, and you know what? When you, By doing that, it's very simple. You can basically pretty much command a couple more dollars for items, right? Plus, you guarantee it works, right? Who wants to buy something with no batteries in it? Um, so we're going to turn this little cute turtle that had some old batteries in it we found in the storage unit and uh, just making that merchandising pop you know it's, it's pretty simple guys you know kid will walk by or mom will walk by oh my god so cute or grandma will walk by that the grandkid will love that and uh, you know what I wouldn't be surprised to sell this for eight nine bucks just having some batteries in it well uh, we sold some Mickey Mouse stuff that's like that that and typical stuff that you know you'd probably see at a garage over two bucks but by putting some batteries in it, making sure it works, we're getting 10, 15 here. So this little tip I thought I'd share with you guys. Always 
always clean up these little toys and um, slap some batteries in there. For one, to make sure they work, and two, leave the batteries in there. Whatever batteries cost these days, pretty much nothing, right? Um, especially if you go on Amazon and buy them in bulk. So yeah, let's tighten that up right there. We're ready to rock. Huh? How cool is that? Let's sell it. All right, so just finished the deal up here for some multiple items. I'm going to show you guys here just kind of what I'm buying and what I'm looking at. Let's take the camera over here and we'll get a better look and see kind of what's going on. Um, first off, a uh, bunch of baby clothes, all brand new with tags. Um, the great thing about this, this business here, opening up this store, doing the buy, sell, trade, is we get to buy items. So we picked up a lot of brand new with tags, you know, stuff that's Marshalls, stuff will sell for three, four dollars in the store here, um, and didn't have very much money in these. We get lots of video games coming in, we got controllers, just some basic games here. Uh, we pay better than GameStop, uh, we don't pay eBay prices because we got to sell them, right? Um, but we do pay higher prices than GameStop, we do pay higher prices than uh, pawn shops. Matter of fact, um, I was just talking to the gentleman outside, he, um, he had some Air Jordans, like some red flights from 2019. They were worn and everything like that. He wanted a hundred dollars for them. I said, I, can't, I wish I could do a hundred dollars for him. You know, he's like, I hey, really need a hundred. And I said, and so I did my comps on eBay, looked at it all up, and you know, they sell for about forty to fifty-five dollars. You know, including shipping. So I offered him thirty dollars for him, and he's like, oh man, you know, I went to the pawn shop. They offered me twenty. I said, you know, yeah, I'm not gonna get rich selling these. You know, if I buy them from you, so. Um, he said he'd, he'd think about it, and maybe he'll come back, maybe he won't. But So you're going to get deals like that where people are going to want more money for their stuff than what it's worth. Um, it happens. Not a big deal. Um, but I wanted to show you guys this. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk to you guys about a buy I did, which let me go back here and I'll show you. So I bought some of these salt and pepper shakers uh, from a Massive Collection. So there's a whole boat ton of these here. This is just not even... A one-th, a one-th, a one-th of a percent. <laughs> um, and I got a whole tub here, multiple tubs of them in here. And then I just had the couple come in here, which are really nice people. Um, we've got more. Look at these. One, two, three tubs. Look at all of these salt and pepper shakers. And some neat ones in here. Coca-Cola, Pepsi. There are some Occupy Japan ones. There's metal ones, wooden ones, porcelain ones. It's just endless. Um, quite a bit. Let's check this one out. This is kind of cool. A little piano one. Yeah, a little piano. So, somebody in their family or their friend was just a, a lifelong collector of salt and pepper shakers. And honestly, I, I know a little bit about them, but not much to be dangerous. So we're going to try to figure out what these are and what's what's expensive, what's not. If any of you guys know anybody who knows a lot about salt and pepper shakers, please reach out to me. We're considering maybe auctioning all these off, just, you know, letting them fly. Um, and obviously we'll have some in the store here. But, yeah, three tubs. Got to do some homework on it. And, um, yeah, even, even have the collector's books. And then we have a notebook just filled with what was in the collection. So all different types. Little Nemos. So they got the dates. There's a lot of work with this. Look at this. This whole book's all the collection. Um, they got Flintstones in there. That's cool. Muppets. So a plethora. <laughs> all right, Cam. Look who just came in. Do you know what this is? Let's see how smart you are. It looks like a hook. A hoof. <laughs> you know, the hoof. It was stuck in, you know, the grill. Well, it kind of does. It looks like a... All right, that's my first... It's just a hoof. What's well, a... like a petrified hoof. Like a mm -hmm. horse's hoof. Mm -hmm. Like, here's like where it would connect to the leg. Oh, I see, yeah. It's... And then like here's the, like, horse's... Mm-hmm. Hoof, 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 hoof. That's what it looks like. No, no other guesses? Now, wow. our, our buddy Jasper came in here today, so you know it's something special. 
Well, I feel like it's a horse's hoof. Horse's hoof, okay. All right, let me show you guys here. Now, it's split in half. It would, it would typically be like this, right? Both sides. So it would be this would be the front side and then the back side. Instead of it being split here, it would look like that. It's it's a part of a axe, a, a Native American axe. This would be the top, like the head part, right? You'd wrap the string in around the there. Yeah, in the center here, and if it was intact, it'd run mm -hmm. around the top. This would be the top to the axe. Well, then how could you expect me to know what that was if it wasn't fully intact? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, did, like I didn't a, know what it, it was. It looks like a petrified horse's hoof yeah. to me. You know, it, can, it looks like a lot of different things, but that's exactly what it is. It's oh. a split in half that he got. So uh, huh. they're definitely desirable pieces. Hmm. Some people say you can't have them, but, you know, they, they sell on eBay. But just a cool little artifact from Arizona I thought was really cool, native. Um, he thinks it's Apache. So a part of the the axe, you know what I mean? Like yeah, can you I can that? see that. It's Ugh. heavy. Yeah, I mean, look at that. Can you imagine that? You get your you're swinging this thing, but even like if in there's full force, you're in a fight. I mean, you get hit in the mouth with that rock, crack. Oh, you're knocking. Yeah, I mean, so you're breaking jaws. It's it's definitely an interesting piece here. We'll put in the store, but super cool. You don't see one of these every day, do you? You don't. What else can we talk about? Well, I got you guys here. Let's talk about the clothing, right? Um, clothing. Sells in the store here uh, anywhere from a couple bucks to ten, fifteen, thirty dollars. Uh, we sold jackets in there for fifty, so it just depends. Um, I know the market of what it is like out here, based on going to Goodwills and Salvation Army. You know, I don't think I'm pricing myself that high on some of the stuff. Um, there's value though, for sure. So the clothing is a big part of the game because it's. You find these a lot in storage units. We have a, a, a boat ton of it, and we're moving it here, not at a record pace, but we're moving it at a at a good clip, right? It's just it's extra money that um, before I had the store, I really couldn't do much with some of this clothing. They, they didn't fit the criteria for me doing it at eBay and at the flea markets and doing the side of the road stuff. It just it just wasn't um, wasn't really moving very well. But yeah, so there's that. The jewelry does it really well. Um, wall art. Uh, Southwest wall art does amazing in here. So, you know, the old the stuff that's metal and, you know, it looks cool, the Coca Pellies, all that type of stuff, that does really well. I think I got two pieces left. We've probably sold 50 of them. But other than that, guys, um, I think the next step in the store is I'm, I'm thinking about getting shelving all around the tops. Okay, it's kind of like right here, but just a little higher up because I could fit more stuff on the border. Of the top of the store um, for more type boxed items more kind of collectible items so I think that's the only space that um, I'm really not occupying here is, is this upper portion of the store because everything else is pretty much jammed full and I'm constantly adding items in the store daily you know we're constantly buying items so the key I think is to, is to make the store for, especially for somebody who's been in here before look like there's something new here and that's always good bring out new items people notice that the other thing is too is, is Kim does an amazing job rearranging items so just some quick tips there hopefully that helps you guys out that are looking at maybe opening a thrift store maybe you open a thrift store already heck maybe you have an antique booth maybe you um, even sell at the flea markets you know there's a lot of good tips you can use from what I'm doing here in multiple facets. Um, even the buy sell trade of it is an interesting thing. So, yeah, we're going to leave it off with that, guys. Appreciate you watching the video today. Again, if you're a salt and pepper lover, leave me a comment. Other than that, I'll see you in the next time around.